is going on guys JD from New York here and this I know something's different before I even get into my typical introduction man I know you guys are probably looking at it JD something is different man this is off the script in full 1080p bro 1080 motherfucking P off the script number 45 how am I coming to you in full 1080p man well it's Christmas Day all right, I opened my gifts last night, right around midnight, and my girlfriend presents me with a new digital camera, the Logitech C920, and this is the first video that I'm recording with it. So, based off that, this video is going to beast. It's going to beast your sub boxes, and off the script is going to look this good from this point on okay now i can really fucking say this is the number one source for wwe news and rumors right here on youtube.com man this is fucking fantastic i'm fucking thrilled i'm going to get a lot more upgradable things going on man i'm getting a new microphone within the new year as well i'm going to be fucking sounding like i should be working for the wwe very soon so look forward to that Hope you guys had a great fucking holiday. It's Christmas Day, actually, as I'm recording this. I got some free time away from work, thank fucking God. The next 48 hours are work-free for JD, and I'm going to take advantage of it, man. I'm going to get back in the swing of things right here on YouTube.com. My first order of business is off the script. Needs to be done for Friday and Saturday, man. So I'm recording off the script today. I hope you guys had a very, very merry and happy fucking holiday Okay, oh, you know, I'm I'm gonna be fully rested by the end of this weekend, man. I'm fucking done with work. The, the, the whole Christmas rush is over with. All we got is New Year's, and then we can finally go on and beast in 2015. But regardless of that, man, thank you for joining me wherever you may be. You know when you see off the script in your sub boxes, it's time to get the fucking party started on the weekends, man. This is your number one source for WWE News and Rumors. Right here on YouTube.com. Not only WWE News and Rumors, but WWE 2K15 content as well. I'm going to start uploading again regularly my career because I know you guys missed Mr. 9 to 5 and Universe Mode every Monday. That's coming, so look forward to that, guys. This is number 45, part number 1. If you guys are new here, what the fuck are you waiting for to hit that subscribe button, man? If you love WWE, if you love being entertained, JD... And his channel are perfect for you. If you're not, if you guys are not following me on Twitter at JD from NY206, follow me. You guys will be up to date on everything that I do right here on YouTube.com. You'll never miss a beat if you're following me on Twitter. All right, so go and do that. If you don't, if you guys don't have a Twitter account, it literally takes 10 seconds to create. Go and do that. If you guys are fans of my channel, keep up to date on everything I do here. You'll never miss a video, okay? Uh, moving on into my plugs, guys. Obviously, I got to shout my guys out and wish them a very Merry Christmas as well. Chair Shot Reality at WrestleZone.com. Labar, Eisenberg, and Ghoulish. Three guys who know how to fucking beast it up, man. The best talk show on the internet when it comes to professional wrestling. Go check those guys out. My man, Labar, happy fucking holidays, bro. I wish you guys a Merry Christmas. Um, it's, it's just unbelievable, man. I love you guys so much, and you guys are a true inspiration to me. Hope the holidays have treated you well. If you guys want more Labar, go check him out. All his social media and personal web pages are down below. Go and check him out. Go follow him on Twitter, and CSR also has a YouTube page as well. Go check those guys out on YouTube.com. Joe Cronin Show and TRN. Go wish those guys a very Merry Christmas. And if you guys want more additional content, you're not going to get better than those guys right there. So go and follow them. Go and subscribe to their content right here on YouTube.com. Now, being that it's the holidays, guys, not a lot of news this weekend. You know, to the point where I might not even do a part three of Off the Strip because there's not that much news going on in the world of professional wrestling. But the news that I have accumulated is big enough to the point where I can fill one and two. And I'm going to start it off with a very, very sad situation. Okay? Kevin Nash arrested. Kevin Nash was arrested late this week, man. Okay? Former WWE and TNA champion Kevin Nash, also known as Diesel, was arrested earlier Wednesday morning at his home in Volusia County, Florida. I don't know if I pronounced that right, all right? He was arrested in his home 
after a physical altercation with his son. TMZ reports local police received a call regarding a domestic dispute between Nash and his 18-year-old son, Tristan, just after midnight, and arrived shortly thereafter. Upon, uh, upon arrival, the 55-year-old former NWO star, alongside his son, were arrested and brought into the police headquarters. The report notes the case is officially being classified as battery. The two are still in custody and are not being held, or, and are being held without bond. TMZ also posted his mugshot from jail, which I don't have here. If you guys want to go see that, you can go over to TMZ's website directly. I'm sure it is right there. Nash is currently under a Legends contract with WWE, where the company has the ability to use his likeness or him personally for any reason it feels necessary. Now, I read this morning that Nash's Legends contract is suspended until all this situation is cleared up and WWE has fully suspended his Legends deal and his Legends contract. Sucks to be Kevin Nash right now. He last wrestled in the WWE at the 2014 Royal Rumble pay-per-view when he entered the Rumble match to the delight of the Pittsburgh crowd. He made several appearances throughout the year, notably to induct his buddy and fellow Click member Scott Hall into the WWE Hall of Fame as Razor Ramon. Moreover, Nash has been a large presence on the WWE Network as he is one of the primary focuses of the Monday Night War series which showcases the fight between WWE and WCW for rating supremacy during the 1990s. In an update, on Wednesday at 10.57 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, in an update provided by TMZ, the Elder Nash was reportedly arrested first, closer to midnight. Two hours later, cops received a call to after Tristan allegedly went after his mother. He was then arrested and charged. Alcohol is expected to have played a role in this entire story. I hope, I hope everything is cleared up. I hope everything, you know, is washed away for Kevin Nash's sake. This does not look good for Kevin Nash. This does not look good for WWE. And it sucks to hear that Kevin Nash and his Legends deal is suspended. Who knows what this might do for Kevin Nash and his other projects. I know he was going to be in the new Magic Mike 2 movie. He was doing a few other projects. You know, these other projects and these people who have aligned themselves with Kevin Nash might not want to work with him if he was arrested for battery, if he hit his wife, if he beat his son. I've read reports that his son, uh, you know, was telling police officers that he was choked and that he was slammed, you know, in a pro wrestling fashion by his father. I don't know what the entire story entails. I don't know what they could have been fighting about. But once someone is under the influence of alcohol heavily, things tend to get out of control. Things, you know, are, are, are said and, and you can't really take it back. So it sucks to hear this kind of thing. Kevin Nash has always been someone that I admired for his uh, contributions to the world of professional wrestling. He was actually on a recent edition of Steve Austin's podcast. And it was very funny. They were cracking jokes. Telling old time stories. And he's a very chill individual. So it really, really sucks to hear something like this. And I hope everything is cleared away. And somehow this gets back to being normal. And Kevin Nash can resume his WWE Legends contract. Because I don't want to see anything happen to Kevin Nash. And, I, you know, I, I know I may bash the WWE from time to time, but I don't, I don't want negative light being brought onto the company. It's got enough of that. And uh, Kevin Nash you know, seems to be bringing more negative light on the WWE. And, and this is just not a good story. So hopefully when more details come out, it's not as bad as it seems right now. But if I do hear anything at all, I will definitely keep you guys posted on what happens with Kevin Nash, his son Tristan, and uh, the entire story that happened here. And like I said, alcohol seems to be uh, the major role in this entire situation. So I will definitely keep you guys posted on that. Big, big, big news regarding Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, the WWE Championship, Brock Lesnar. 
You guys don't want to miss this. You know, go grab a beverage and sit down, pause the video. You're not going to want to miss what I got to say because realistically, WWE could be on the verge of something very, very special. And I'm going to go over that with you right now. And it, it really does make sense. I've been one to say, you know, I think Brock Lesnar should go into the uh, the big event, WrestleMania 31, with the WWE Championship. They, they brought him along this far. And now he's going to the Royal Rumble to defend against John Cena. And it would only be right, right? How else would you want to get Roman Reigns over if WWE wants to give Roman Reigns the keys to the kingdom? I don't think Roman Reigns is ever going to be ready, man. He's a fucking fraud. Okay, that's what I think of Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is never going to be ready, especially not right now. You're not going to make me believe he is going to be worthy enough to defeat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. But what I'm about to report to you may be the fucking silver lining in all of this. They may actually get me interested in a Roman Reigns WWE Championship program leading into WrestleMania. Okay, listen to this. Seth Rollins may cash in at the Royal Rumble on January 25th. Okay, I'm all for it. Your ears are perking up. Let's get into it. According to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and the Wrestling Observer Radio Show, WWE may be planning on Mr. Money in the Bank walking away from the Royal Rumble as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. If WWE does pull the trigger on Rollins cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase at the Royal Rumble, he will likely do so after John Cena defeats current champion Brock Lesnar in the main event. Cena and Lesnar's match is being billed as the final chapter between the two. And the company wants Cena versus Rollins to continue moving forward. With Cena being the only man that can reinstate the authority's power. The company may use Rollins winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship as a means of getting Triple H and Stephanie McMahon back on television going into WrestleMania 31. And I'm going to end that right there before I continue on. Beautiful. Beautiful. You mean to tell me WWE is actually making sense? This is fucking brilliant. The only way... They have reiterated to us that the authority can come back on television is by John Cena alone. That came from the mouth of Vince McMahon. How would you do that? You would have Seth Rollins steal the championship from John Cena, dangle it over his head. You want another fucking rematch against me? I'm the champion now. You want your title back? You want a match against me for the title? You're going to reinstate the authority. That's the only way you're going to get the championship match. So, in a lack of better judgment from Cena, on his end, he's going to bring Triple H and Stephanie McMahon back to television. It makes sense. It sounds fucking great. And it's logical. Who would have thought? Who would have thought, man? Moving on. Triple H is reportedly slated to face Sting at WrestleMania. But for that to make sense... Cena will have to bring the authority back sometime on the road to WrestleMania. If Rollins does cash in on Cena follow, following the defeat of Brock Lesnar, who is not expected to re-sign with WWE following his last appearance on the books for the company, he may state that the only way Cena gets another shot at the championship is if he reinstates the authority. The two will then likely compete for the title, at WWE's newest pay-per-view event in February, entitled Fast Lane. As previously reported, Vince McMahon and Triple H have been at odds about who should main event WrestleMania 31. McMahon wanted a marquee matchup like The Rock vs. Brock Lesnar to headline the event. Not needed. You don't need two guys, especially part-timers, to headline an event when you have the pieces to that puzzle right within the WWE right now, okay, so that's not really needed, that's Vince's fucking mind at work, you don't need that, you can deliver a Wrestlemania quality main event with who you have on the roster right now, and I'm gonna get into that, because I would personally love to see it, and I reported this several months ago, several months ago, Triple H wants a young talent, such as Roman Reigns, he wants Reigns, or someone 
in the same vein as Reigns to be passed the torch from Brock Lesnar on March 29th. Reports for months have claimed that Reigns will likely win the 28th annual Royal Rumble match and head to WrestleMania 31 as the number one contender for the championship. With the possibility of Rollins winning the title at the Royal Rumble, the proposed WrestleMania 31 card could develop into something interesting. Rollins could face Reigns, which would bring about their split in the Shield in June relevant again where Reigns will finally get his hands on the man that turned his back on his brothers for an opportunity with the authority. However, this leaves Cena and Lesnar open for opponents. Triple H is slated to face the vigilante Sting, while The Undertaker is penciled in to face Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 31. With these main events being tossed around, this leaves major players such as Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler, Rusev, Luke Harper, Big Show, Ryback, Sheamus, Kane, and Randy, or Randy Orton all open for different matches on the card, as well as the second annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which I hope, for the fucking love of God, does not come back to WrestleMania because the first one was fucking dreadful, okay? While Rollins cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase at the Royal Rumble is only an idea at the moment, it could change the landscape of the road to WrestleMania in 2015 in a way that the WWE Universe had not currently foreseen. Moving on. Roman Reigns may not win the Royal Rumble as previously reported. After months of reports claiming WWE wanted to position Reigns as the next big thing over the next few months, including a Rumble and WrestleMania win, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and the Wrestling Observer Radio Show is saying that the company may be changing their minds. Reigns has not had the overwhelming response the company thought he would have following his return in early December. During the December 22nd edition of Monday Night Raw, fans actually booed the superstar, chanting boring during his bout with the Big Show, and barely made any noise when he won the match via countout. Aw, oh, did that surprise you, WWE? I didn't even watch Monday Night Raw this past Monday. That's how fucking boring it was. Especially a match with Big Show and Roman Reigns, man. You really want to put us to sleep to close out the year. You did a great fucking job with that one, alright? Now, this worries top WWE officials. Okay, and it should. Honestly, it really should. Vince McMahon and Triple H have reportedly been positioning Reigns to be the next John Cena. Mistake number one. You don't force feed someone, especially a WWE fan. You don't force feed them someone you want them to like. Okay, I've said this countless times on here. Why was Daniel Bryan so beloved by many? Because everything regarding Daniel Bryan was natural. It was genuine. And more importantly, I'm going to use the word organic. People hopped on his back because they seen someone they can fucking feel good about. Okay? They loved Daniel Bryan. You didn't force Daniel Bryan down our throats. And what happened? The WWE stood up and said, fuck you. We want Brian. We don't want you to force feed us Batista. Okay? If the WWE is going to go down this same road again, it will be even worse this year with Roman Reigns being force fed down our throats. The man is taking acting lessons and he's fucking dreadful behind the microphone. He has done absolutely nothing but make me cringe every time he opens his mouth. He's not genuine. He feels robotic. It doesn't sound like someone I'm going to invest my time in, okay? He sounds like a joke when he's talking, man. He tries to sound cool, and then he comes off sounding robotic. It's not genuine, and he has no attributes like The Rock. The Rock was a natural. You gave The Rock bullet points, he went behind the microphone, and he did what he had to do, and he added a dash of comedic brilliance to it as well. Roman Reigns is the complete polar opposite of what The Rock is, 
You're not going to compare the two, okay? You can't even put, and I know people don't appreciate John Cena, but you can't even put him in the same class as John Cena, yet you want to make him into the next John Cena. It doesn't work that way. People will revolt if you give Roman Reigns the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. It will backfire and blow up in WWE's face. Big time. Believe that. Okay? And I'm biting off Roman Reigns. Believe that. Roman Reigns is not the answer to your problems. But, but, WWE might, they might have a shot at fucking brilliance for WrestleMania 31. Okay? Moving on with this report. They want to place Roman Reigns as the next John Cena. CM Punk even alluded to this fact during his revealing podcast with Colt Cabana on Thanksgiving, okay? Saying that they placed Reigns in the shield because they wanted their guy, and their guy is in quotes, in a position to be on the main roster to get pushed fast. If you guys missed that, he also mentioned that he wanted, Punk wanted, Chris Hero to be in the shield. WWE turned down that offer and included Roman Reigns, okay? The Shield was all a proposed idea by CM Punk. They wanted Reigns, Punk wanted Hero, obviously they did not listen to CM Punk, alright? However, like I previously mentioned, his mic skills have only appeared to get worse since his return, even after attending acting classes while he was away. And now WWE officials are looking at other options for who may win the Royal Rumble. Among the top names being discussed for the big win are Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. Two names that I didn't think were going to be tossed at us as possible winners for the Royal Rumble. Ziggler, the current Intercontinental Champion, is an option. But Meltzer states that he would need a Daniel Bryan-esque fan push to get him into that spot. If there's one guy that might receive a Daniel Bryan-esque push, it is Ziggler. Okay, if you guys want Ziggler to win the Royal Rumble, you gotta have something like last year to happen to him like it did Daniel Bryan. Excuse me. According to Meltzer, Ambrose is in line currently to win the Royal Rumble if Roman Reigns does not get that rub. As previously reported, WWE may have Seth Rollins cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase at the Royal Rumble following the Cena-Lesnar WWE Championship match. Cena would go over Brock, winning the title in the process, only to have Rollins cash in and win the belt from Cena. This would then lead to Rollins dangling a rematch over Cena's head to get the authority back on television, and would mean Lesnar would go into WrestleMania, which could possibly be his last match with no championship. Previous reports state that WWE may be second-guessing Reigns, but the Rumble was his to lose. Perhaps the response for the one versus all boasting superstar during Raw on December 22nd has further pushed the company into, to uh, into looking towards a different plan. Now, I'm going to throw this at you, okay? I want you guys to think about this one. What if Seth Rollins wins the WWE Championship, okay? What if? We don't know yet. We don't know which way WWE is going to go. And this is why this Cena-Lesnar match may be the most unpredictable of them all. Because we don't know which, which way WWE is going to go. They have a lot of different avenues they can go down. Alright, what if Rollins wins the championship? What if Ambrose wins the Royal Rumble? Can you imagine that? Ambrose and Reigns. Ambrose and Reigns. Both. The last two guys in the Royal Rumble. That's fucking exciting. That's absolutely fucking exciting. You got a face in Roman Reigns and you got a fan favorite in Dean Ambrose. If they're the last two guys, they go at it, battle it, fucking tooth and nail as the last two guys in the Royal Rumble. And they pull a 1994. Lex Luger and Bret Hart. They both go over the top rope at the same time. We have co-winners for the Royal Rumble. This is something the WWE has not done in the Royal Rumble for many, many years, this year, 2015, it would make sense. It would be the first time since that one incident with Luger and Bret Hart, where they went on to WrestleMania 10 and there was two WWE Championship matches, okay, or WWF at the time, at Madison Square Garden, all right? Luger and Yokozuna, and then Bret beat Yokozuna in the main event to win the title. 
What if they do that? What if they do that? And in the end of it all, Rollins holds the belt, beats Cena at Fastlane, goes into WrestleMania, and we get Rollins, Reigns, and Ambrose in a triple threat match for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 31. Can you imagine that main event? Can you imagine that main event? What that would do to three guys. What that would do to the overall product. Roman Reigns is not going to main event WrestleMania by himself. I just don't see it. You want to protect Roman Reigns to the point where you you could possibly put him in a main event at WrestleMania. That is the way you go about it. Now, what happens to Lesnar? What happens to Cena? Who do they fight at WrestleMania? I don't know. You could put Lesnar versus Orton at WrestleMania. That could be interesting. You could you you know you could put uh, Cena versus Rusev at WrestleMania and, and go go about that. And that's been rumored for quite some time now as well. Okay. You can develop just a new feud for, for Cena and have him go against Rusev. And obviously Rusev would have to come out on top because it would be better if WWE prolongs him being undefeated and not being pinned or submitted. Right? And then you got Sting versus Triple H and the Undertaker versus uh, Bray Wyatt. Shaping up to be a damn good fucking WrestleMania card. And then you can worry about next year and WrestleMania 32. I like it. I like it. I think that would be fucking phenomenal. It would give us something different than, than the proposed predictability of what WWE has planned right now. Uh, Reigns versus Lesnar, I, I don't want to see it, man. Nobody wants to see it because nobody's going to be interested. It's going to be too predictable. If WWE goes this route, it opens up a whole new fucking door and it's just going to change that predictability into fucking something exciting, something unpredictable, and something we didn't see coming from WWE. It would show us that WWE is actually using their fucking brains and coming up with a plan to give us something new, something fresh, something we haven't seen before. I like it. Let me know what you guys think about my proposed idea. For the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 31's main event. Let me know down below in the comments. This is off the script, guys. Number 45, part number one. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed my new HD 1080p camera, man. Let me know what you think down below. This is the number one source for WWE news and rumors right here on YouTube.com. If you're not subscribed yet, man, what the fuck are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. If you're not following me on Twitter at JD from NY206, what do I got planned for part two? Well, Randy Orton's Raw return is supposed to be happening this following uh, or this coming Monday. The Ascension looks like they'll be debuting on Monday Night Raw this coming Monday. Bray Wyatt injured. What's going on with that? Is that all a big troll? Is he really injured? I got the full story on that. And something that is just making me want to vomit all over my microphone right now. A new gimmick for Adrian Neville. And you're not going to believe what WWE has planned. For poor Adrian Neville. You want to see me go off? Watch tomorrow's video, man. I'll see you later.